Painting from light to dark is one of the main principles of painting in watercolour. You start painting the lighter areas of the scene and gradually go darker, saving the very darkest areas to the end. This is video number two of a three-part series I'm doing based on various scenes around Mykonos. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter, and I produce full-length video tutorials with commentary, which will hopefully help you improve your watercolour techniques and create some great looking paintings. So this is the uh, source photo for painting number two in Mykonos. So this is Mykonos town and we have in the center a fish market. Uh, there's a, a lovely bay uh, over to the left. We can just see a little bit of the sea here, but around the bay we've got some low level buildings. There are various shops. Uh, cafes and restaurants and we've got an assembly of uh, boats here um, three groupings of boats over on the right um, on the left hand side here and then coming towards us a group of boats um, and, and loads of people so lots of lots of people to contend with um, there's a couple of um, vehicles in there also but this, this video is all about painting light from dark. Now, it is a principle. Um, you don't have to stick by it. I know some people, and I do it myself sometimes, I will go in with a dark colour first and then go lighter. If you, wanna, if you want a soft transition from dark to light, that can be a way of doing it. You go in with a darker, darker paint, first of all, maybe quite thick, and then uh, lighten it up with maybe more water or slightly different... Um, different uh, paint and you the, the transition between the two you get a nice graded uh, transition from dark to light so you can do that but generally most of the time we start with the painting in the lighter areas or indeed leaving some areas of the paper completely white which is what I'm going to do um, for certain areas of the scene that I want to be deliberately kept quite light like the like the canopy uh, of the fish market, parts of the details of boats that are catching the light, the promenade here around the bay. I'm going to keep those deliberately white, but I will then go in with gradually darker colours um, in the painting, um, ending up with quite dark, quite dark values um, using my neutral tint to get in the the, uh, the bigger contrast between the, the light and the dark. So that's the scene. Let's see how we get on. First step then, as I normally do, do my outline sketch, the outline drawing with a soft pencil to get in the main shapes of the, really the buildings, the light, uh, the, the canopy, kind of a focal point in the in the painting, in the scene, and then the boats and some indications of figures. I, I normally always start in the top left corner, not sure why, but um, as per normal, it's top left corner, uh, there's a little dome of uh, some kind of a, a chapel or something left or center and just now giving an indication of the rooftops the the jagged line of the rooftops some verticals here and there uh, by the way if you want to keep seeing my reference photo as i paint the demo you can open up another tab in your browser uh, go to the same video in that tab uh, pause on it in the opening minutes where i show the uh, the picture falls full screen or better still and excuse the plug you could join my patreon scheme patreon.com slash tim wilmot where i share high resolution high resolution images of my paintings and provide critiques of your paintings so continuing down the scene i've got some boats over on the left hand side up on the uh this quite level beach 
and then a group of small craft on the right hand side my third video is going to be all about um, reflections in a harbour scene so I'm going to be doing quite a few more boats there harbour scene in Mykonos so this is uh, the final group of little boats just to the right of the centre and now get, it, get in some figures I'm not going to paint all the figures that were in the photo there must have been Oh, well over well over 50 maybe 100 um, people in that scene that would be impossible to paint so just get in an indication of a, a few of them uh, and they're, they're quickly drawn in uh, a at the head and then the the body and an impression of where the legs are going to be so that's the car there just where I pointed. There's the bay. Quite quite a big area of this scene. I've moved the horizon quite high up, but quite a big area of the scene is the beach. So being a large area, I'm going to have to think about introducing some different textures and values in there rather than it being all one monochrome colour which would be quite boring um, being being so large an area. So these figures are relatively easy they're all sort of the same distance away and I'm careful to from a perspective point of view have all their heads level, um, give or take a few millimetres, have all those heads sort of level, um, rather than it being we're looking down the scene or up. Uh, we, we, we're, we're kind of on the same level as all of those uh, people. So that's pretty much the drawing done and on to the next stage. So I'll start off with the sky. Now, I've got a big mop brush here. The sky is quite a small part of the overall scene. And I don't want it to be too fussy. Just a nice Mediterranean blue. Uh, what quite a, quite a, quite a, it's going to be quite a dark value in comparison to the lighter areas. So I want to go quite dark and with watercolour, things are going to dry lighter than um, sometimes than you think. So you've got to try and compensate and go a bit darker. Now I'm coming down to the tops of the roofs and So I'm just observing the, the little edge I made for the rooftops. Here and there, a few chimney tops and jagged edges. And then fairly light on the right hand side. You can see I just sort of scooped up a residue of, um, there was too much paint on the right hand side. It would, have, it would have gone too dark. So just scooped it all up. Now, buildings. Again, I'm going quite dark. So the, a lot of these buildings are in the, in the shade there. There are little bits and pieces that are catching the light. So I will deliberately leave out little slithers of paper to, to, to give the impression of something catching the light. Paint around that dome. Notice I'm holding the brush a little bit closer to the point to give me a bit more control. Whereas uh, 
generally with a wash I'm holding it right at the opposite end so it can be a little bit looser. Going As I'm coming down to street level I will go a little bit darker by adding in a bit of ultramarine blue, maybe less water as well. There's some canopies, coverings over the cafes along the front. Now while it's still moist and damp, I can add a few extra colours in just to add a bit more interest to, to the colouring of the background building. So I just picked up a bit of yellow ochre. Right at the top there, I've got neutral tint, so I am going in quite dark for the base. Going right down to that street level, which generally I'm, I'm not going to paint the, uh, the street. Bit of negative painting around the cars and the figures. It's a good, a good idea to have a a good brush with a, a nice edge to it, a nice point to it, so you can do a little bit more precise painting around figures like that with the same brush, rather than having to stop the flow and you're swapping brushes all the time. So this is this, the same brush, quite a big brush, although it's got a nice point to it. Continuing along the base of the buildings, so I, I didn't draw in, I didn't draw in all the figures, but I've, I'm giving myself some opportunity to introduce a few extra ones with that that jagged line there, um, just where I I think there could be. I could sneak in another figure um, that's going to help me having that. Uh, that jagged edge. Now for the beach. Which is, so if I could just go over my colours, I very rarely change the colours in my palette. But from the top, I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre there. I just picked up some yellow ochre. Viridian green, cobalt, green or turquoise, uh, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and then a Windsor red. And three up from the bottom, which I just used there, a light red. A cadmium orange right down the bottom is cadmium yellow. So with this beach, I'm mixing in a little bit of cerulean blue in there. Mainly, it's a combination of yellow ochre, a light red, that light red, and cadmium orange. Remember, it is going to dry a little bit lighter, a bit more cerulean blue, some, some sort of horizontal streaks of that cerulean blue and come a bit thicker as I come towards the foreground but lighter over the right hand side. That's where the, the uh, sun is brightest, that the, uh, the light is coming from the right hand side. I'm, I'm just dabbing with the brush to introduce different areas of 
some different patches of darker, darker colors. And then just dribble in a little bit of neutral tint. Try not to overdo it. So I've got to now let the beach dry. I'm just checking above the rooftops that uh, that's drying a little bit because I'm going to paint in the far hills just but just before the beach goes dry I've just splattered in there with a a mop brush I could have used any brush but a little bit of it, I could have used clear water uh, I just picked up something in the palette there just to flick over just to introduce a, a little bit of extra texture into that beach with some moderate splattering. Background, hill, neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a bit of a mixture here, a bit of viridian green. I don't want to go too green with the background. It is dark, not too green. If I went too green, it would appear, it, it would have the impression of bringing it further forwards almost closer to us than the than the buildings which I don't want and I'm going to have just a thin slither of the background hills that there are some buildings in the hills I'll try and create those with a few softer areas left unpainted or a bit of lifting the brush i'm using now is a smaller smaller mop brush than i had initially this is a squirrel mop brush so it's it's a little bit softer than the first synthetic brush i had That, that instantly gives us the first bit of contrast you see with the almost um, the, the horizontal lighter air on the top of the buildings and then the, the contrast of the the background hills there nice nice little bit of contrast between the two the buildings are getting quite dry now so I can start to add a bit of detail initial detail to those buildings this is probably the smallest brush I use a small synthetic round brush it's got a good good point to it quite long hairs as well um, almost like a rigger but not so not so long the ratio of water now to pigment there's not so much water as I was doing initially generally generally as I go on this is my my own particular way of painting as as I progress paint is generally going to get a little bit thicker I'm going to leave the sea there's just that a little bit of water coming in from the left hand side I'm going to leave that unpainted see what that looks like I think it will be a nice balance of that lighter area with the lighter on the right hand side anyway see what I, I think towards the end just under the 
canopies, the coverings of the, the restaurant have got some darker, darker, darker verticals, uh, the, the interior of uh, the, these buildings. Adding, adding in these darker values here is also trying to emphasize a little bit of that lighter area on the tops of the rooftops. I'm not painting in all the windows, just a few of them, and that they're all they're all just done with a single brush stroke. If I if I actually spend too much time doing these windows, it will just look a little bit too too tight. I want to have the impression of a loose feel to it. There are some larger windows and doorways on the right hand side. few people going back to my smaller mop brush now that's got a good point to it good edge I could have used that smaller round brush for this but using the mop brush quite quickly it does introduce a few nice marks for um, figures when you do it quickly So the legs are quite understated and the main thing is the shadow that, that gives the impression of uh, a sunny scene straight away. I'll not paint all of the figures in a lighter colour, so some darker figures just in front of the fish market, very quickly do the main body and quickly paint in some legs, but again the main, the main thing is the shadow. Right, some horizontals there just to connect up the various figures, the base of the fish market and then over to the, the figures on the promenade. That's, I said earlier about the jagged edge, the base of the background building and giving an opportunity to introduce, insert some new figures. So as I look at it, I think, does that little, does that little gap, does it look like someone's head or the top of someone's shoulder or something like that? And you can just then paint in the rest of the, the figure to make it a little bit more realistic. So gradually I'm adding in more figures, not, not as many as there were in the original photograph, that would just be just too much. It would look just look, it would look a little bit too busy. But just particularly on the right hand side there, um, it needs something to balance the the composition over there with the with a, a a larger number of figures now for the boats starting 
with the with the both furthest away medium sized mop brush with a good edge good point a lighter blue now the one in front of it I'll make I'll make red don't want to be too perfect with the with the top tops of the boats I'm deliberately making the boats quite they're quite wet I've got quite a lot of paint not too not too dry with the with the brush marks plenty of paint in there because very shortly I'm going to go in with the darker shadows and I want there I want the the bottom of the hulls to be quite wet so that when I go in with the darker shadows it, it blends it blends quite nicely in with each other I'm nearly done with the figures. Now making up my shadow mix. Same brush and Alizon Crimson, Ultrine Blue, bit of neutral tint as well. Quite thicker and you can see I've got a slight slope on the board and, it, and against gravity that dark, those darker values are going up into up into the boat which is just what I want and then these on the right hand side I'm not using neat neutral tint I am mixing in ultramarine blue or alloys and crimson in there with it so it's not too it's not going to appear too grey. It's a bit more interesting as as regards a a shadow. The beach now. I'm, I'm dragging some dry brush marks over the beach surface. You can see how lighter that neutral tint dried in the beach when I was first doing it, it did appear quite dark but you can see how lighter it's gone now and it's just blended in quite nicely with the rest of the beach just to give some softer darker areas but it's quite nice having some stronger lines some stronger brush marks on the beach just to give an impression of the slight the slight slope and different texture, maybe a bit of shingle, little stones or something and going across the beach. Just finished the, the last grouping of boats over there. Um, some shadow now within the hulls of the boats. And this car in front of the market, I decide in my photograph it was uh, we were looking at it sideways on. I've just turned it around, so I'm looking head on with that car. Just for me, it, it looks better like that. Some posts and whatnot underneath the fish market. Perhaps a few shadows going across the top of the covering of the market. The 
dome. I'm not sure what that building is, but it's got this brown brown dome. It might be a church or a chapel, possibly. Um, a bit of light hitting the right hand side. few vertical aerials on tops of the rooftops. And more details to the boats. I think boats always look a little bit more realistic when you add in this line I'm doing now, just below the top of the boat, a generally a dry brush mark, darker colour, could be dark blue, dark red, doesn't really matter. As long as there's a little bit of a, a dark line, then just just makes it a bit more realistic. Back on the on the beach, when you've got little lighter areas, little um, yeah, like lighter areas, you can make them into pebbles or stones just by adding in a bit of shadow to one side of them. Can't resist putting in more figures. A darker figure there, just to the right of the fish market. Start with the head, very quickly do the body. Maybe some posts or something over there, just to the left of the boats. A few bits of rigging. So just keep on adding in a few more marks with this brush. This brush is, is actually quite, it's not a rigger, but it, the, the hairs are quite, quite long and it's got a bit of, bit of springiness in it, which gives a bit of life and uh, a bit of life to the brush, the brush marks I make. And good sort of water, retains a lot of water as well. Now, in the background buildings, there were some lighter areas that I can use to make into, say, street lights. A lighter, a lighter mark could be a, the, the the lamp, and then just add a, a dark vertical for the post below that. Make up some flesh colour for 
some legs, just a few. When you sort of understate the, the legs, it does give a sense of um, movement to the scene. So the figures are not too stationary. So that is pretty much it as a quick sketch painting number two of Mykonos. So this is the end painting then. Just, it, this is a bit truer to the actual colours of the painting. Um, this was taken on my mobile phone. So I've got a different camera for the, uh, for making the video to the, to the, the picture I took here. But all about painting light to dark. As, as I say, this is the number two in my little Mykonos series um, in Mykonos town. And what attracted me to the scene was the, the light hitting the, the uh, roof of the fish market, uh, groups of small boats as well, very loosely painted in, lots of figures in the middle ground. And I was able to introduce some um, extra figures. Not, I didn't draw all of them in at the first step. I, I just drew in a few of them to indicate where they, where they were gonna be. But then I could see little areas in the background that could be there could be another one there for example that could be the head and that could be a, a darker figure in there so yeah lots of opportunities to to introduce actually i can see a figure here it almost looks like a the top of a figure and the, these could be a pair of shorts and we've got a little bit of leg there and that could be a figure coming towards us we don't know uh, yeah so a very loose scene Painting light to dark, starting with the lighter values, getting darker um, or quite dark uh, in some areas. The details of the of the um, verticals and some of the fish marking windows and some of the figures. Hope you like it and catch up with you on number three or the next video.